In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at severe cold as the polar vortex is actually going to move down into the United States. We did talk about this two or three weeks ago. Sometimes these events are easier to see further out than other times. And in this case, it was pretty easy to see that this was a possibility. Uh, a lot of other forecasters were also on board with this. So I don't want to act like I was the only one calling for this. This was, for the most part, generally expected throughout the, the meteorology field and throughout uh, among other forecasters as well. Uh, so this is definitely something that was expected to impact us before February. Coming in a little bit earlier than we thought, but definitely happening as expected at some point here. We're going to be taking a look at this and also as a bonus, taking a look at the, the Canadian model, which I usually don't do on my main channel. So that's going to be another piece of bonus content today. Let's take a look at things and we're right on the doorstep of this event. Uh, we see that there is some warmer air moving into the east for the time being. And this is all happening as we have a low in between these areas. And what's happening is with this low, I'm going to draw it in colors here to make things a little bit easier. Uh, actually, it's way harder. So let me just reiterate that. We're not going to do different colors. We're going to take a look at the low here. There's a warm front up above cold front down below so what's happening is we have warm air surging in from the gulf adding moisture to this entire storm and this is pushing northward to the east of this low pressure system that we have cold air is easily able to dive uh, behind that cold front here and this is a pretty standard setup as this low moves eventually eastward and up we're going to also see the warm front move out and we're going to eventually see that cold front swing all the way through and that's when all of this is gonna move this way. So we're gonna watch all of this take place together here. As we can see, it's moving in, and I don't wanna just, I don't wanna underestimate this. This is severe cold, especially within these magentas and pinks, but really we would call it a significant cool down even within these blues and greens. So those are gonna be relatively cold. Uh, the magentas and pinks here are gonna be severely below normal. If you take a look at the bottom left of the screen there, that's in Fahrenheit, 25 to 35 degrees or more below average here in these pink areas. So certainly not a light cool down by any means. This is a severe uh, Arctic outbreak that we're seeing take place here. And as you can see, these pinks and magentas eventually move down to where they're in the central uh, states here by the time we're taking a look at Tuesday. So I'm gonna just take you by the dates here. Today's Thursday, the 11th here. Here's the tw uh, 12th here, 13th here on Saturday, and then uh, Sunday, the 14th, Monday the 15th here, and then Tuesday the 16th is when we get to this point where it's located over the plains. Of course, with all of these situations, we do see it lose a little bit of steam, but for sure these magentas and pinks that we still see here are gonna be between 25 and 35 degrees below normal, which is still extremely potent. So I, I don't wanna downplay this at all, like I mentioned earlier. By the time it does reach the east, we do see a little bit less intensity here for these areas, but still we have about 15 to 25 degrees below normal, which is still on the severe side of things. It's just so potent to begin with that this is, it looks like a lot less and it is a lot less, but it's still significantly below normal compared to what's average. And I also wanna iterate that this is an ensemble model. We're using the European ensemble model here to look at this. So over time, you do see things get averaged out. I do suspect that it's gonna be a little bit more intense than this, but this is extremely valuable for timing. Uh, timing and location is, is the biggest thing that we're gonna use here for this tool. So that is the heart of that cooldown. We do see that one eventually come to an end, but what this model suggests is around the 19th, we're actually gonna have cooldown number two moving in to the central states again. So this is not a one-time event. It's only gonna last a few days. We actually see another very potent cooldown. And once again, by the 20th, we see this located over the central and eastern states here. Again, we're seeing the blues, not magentas here, but this is an ensemble model. So this is actually a pretty conservative estimate compared to what this model really wants to show. So likely looking at even more intense temperature departures than what we're seeing here. The other favorable factor that we have going for the east for to see cold here and snow is that we have a positive PNA now set up over the west, which it's been a few weeks since we've seen a pretty sturdy positive PNA setup. And this is even more so going to encourage this cold air to really dive to the southeast. So certainly all signs are pointing towards that for the 19th through about the 22nd at least. Uh, there is some cold hanging on through about the 25th. And then this model says that we will eventually warm up and see cold return kind of to the central and western states here with more warmth up the east. But this is going to be likely 15 to 20 days from now. So 
also, you know, confidence goes down within that time frame, so take it with a grain of salt, but definitely looking colder for the time being. Uh, I'm gonna take us into the extended range here as well. We see it kind of all move through. This is actually as we're taking a look at the end of January into the beginning of February, and we see cold again for the east here during this time frame, according to your European extended ensemble model. So this one goes a lot further. Um, we see that cold kind of hang on all the way through the mid to late portion of February. So February as of now is also looking colder in the east, a little bit warmer uh, here in the north central as you can see. Colder along the west, colder along the east, kind of a what I, what I would usually call a horseshoe pattern because of that horseshoe shape. And we also have this inner edge to that horseshoe. So you get kind of this horseshoe look here uh, as you can see. That's why I call it that of course. Now definitely significant and concerning cold air. I would argue that the cold air coming up is more concerning than the storms. People are usually just more interested in the snow than they are in the temperature, so that's why we're uploading this to the second channel. The, the Canadian model, we see this big snowstorm, obviously, for the Midwest and Great Lakes move through. We can see the cold air taking place. We do get this second storm, which looks to be more of an East Coast snowstorm, as noted on the main channel yesterday. And as we can see, this moves straight towards the east. This model actually has it a lot closer to the coast than we saw on some of our previous models. So this would be a little bit interior compared to what we're seeing from some other guidance, but still a lot of areas impacted that have not seen much snowfall yet this season. And that eventually does come to an end. We'll take a look at the total snowfall in a moment, but we can see that second cooldown around this 19th time frame also showing up here as the jet stream is doing something like this, a very, very deep dive into the east as we have very frigid air moving back into these areas. Again, around the 18th, 19th time frame, potentially lasting four or five days there. Now, this is a perfect time to tell you that we are picking up new clients and actively looking for new clients for our company, Prestige Weather. So you can use the email prestigeweather at gmail.com to contact us. You can also look at the website and find that contact form there under the services tab and then commercial uh, services. That's where you're going to find that as well. And you can send it to us through that as well. Let's get into business. You know, we've been helping a lot of people with timing, amounts, more localized and specific information that caters to your business. We want to kind of break through the meat of it and give you only the information that you really, really need instead of boring you with all of this unimportant information to your business specifically. So if you're interested in that, reach out to us and let's get to work. Now let's take a look here at these total snowfall totals. I don't know why I just said it that way, but there you go. Uh, we can see potential snowfall in this area from storm number two as this storm kind of rises and moves up the east. That's certainly a factor. And then we have storm number one up in this area as well uh, as that storm moves through this area. So definitely looking at some above average snowfall in this corridor over the next 10 days, even according to this Canadian model. And then up and down the west, we obviously have this mountainous snowfall taking place. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as I still plan to make about two or three videos or one or two videos a week on this channel as bonus content. So subscribe, hit the bell icon, like the video, and leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one.